Cub Studios here and today we're going to um, get into um, using clipping masks with um, uh, overlaying a really neat textures and colors over text and uh, we're going to show you a, a lot of different ways that you can do this you maybe didn't realize that you could do it um, non-destructively and so we're going to get into how to use a clipping mask today how to stack cli clipping masks and then also how to use um, patterns, um, textures, and even photographs um, to overlay on text to create some really neat um, some effects that you can see. And you can see right here that uh, what I've already got here is really neat. Here's an example of what we're going to use. So this is a little more advanced tutorial, but um, so you, you probably want to check out the pattern fill tutorial first um, before using this. Um, you should know a little bit about uh, creating gradients um, and uh, it's not that complicated but um, we're gonna have some fun today okay so first let me turn off some of these things and we'll get started and I'll show you how um, we do this and so first of all let me shut off all of these layers um, the first thing is to create some text a text layer and put some nice font, choose any font that you want. The one you see here is called Ballpark and it's a free font on uh, defonts.com and I'll put the the link in the description for you guys. So this is a real big font today. I'm using probably 400 point size font just so we can uh, zoom in. I can show you the details of uh, you know uh, on the video so you can see it clearly. So you have your font, and what I do normally with any font is I add some basic styling to it first, some background shadow and some highlight to it. I love to see font kind of pop out like I can you know, touch and feel it, like it's real. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I do a highlight layer and I do what's called a double drop shadow. And it's just a little more refined than a standard drop shadow. So if you look in the layers here, here's my text layer my original and then I have um, command clicked on the original shape and then I just um, filled it with white on a new layer so this will be my highlight layer and we can just call it that highlight and and then um, I'll command deselect that and then uh, do the same thing you can command select the original text layer and then fill with black and then duplicate the black layer. So you should have your original text, your highlight in white, and then two black layers of text below. And this is what we're gonna use our drop shadow, double drop shadow with. So if I turn that one on, the first drop shadow is a tighter, um, I would say anywhere from, um, it's Gaussian blurred from 12 to 15 pixels, um, and it's dropped down two to three pixels below the original text to give it this effect. Now your standard drop shadow will be, I'll show you what that'll look like. This is probably a standard drop shadow. Um, it's probably, you know, 20 pixel blur on it. You know, it's, it's standard, it looks good, and it's dropped down a couple pixels. But by adding two, one, a tight um, uh, drop shadow, and also the large wide drop shadow, you get this great um, realism uh, to your text. Uh, if you look at an object sitting uh, anywhere like on a desk, you'll notice there is a wide shadow and then right where the object meets the surface, there's always this tighter, darker shadow on it. So you're really mimicking a real object here. So it just adds a little bit um, more real look. So we get those two. Um, and then the highlight layer, layer we'll just leave for now um, and it'll, it'll show up later. You won't be able to see it at the moment. And then you can choose a background. I'm just using a blue color um, to show off the shadow and the highlight. So let's get into um, clipping masks. Um, first of all, I'll undo some of these because I'll show you before. And first of all, we'll show you how to use any photograph and you can overlay it onto your text. So here's the photograph that I've chosen. 
and you can use any photograph, any um, a picture of concrete, a picture of wood, texture, whatever you want, and simply put that uh, that layer right above your text layer, and then right click, and then create clipping mask, and watch what happens. It only shows your picture um, within the text area, and the nice thing about a clipping mask is it's it's a very targeted. Um, way to uh, affect things. So instead of affecting all the layers below the mask, you're just affecting the top um, text layer. And that's important because if you notice, the picture doesn't affect our, our shadow layer or our highlight layer at all. It just is on the top layer there. And that's this is where a clipping mask really shines, is when you're trying to just affect one thing and not hurt anything or, or change anything below it. So here's where the advantage is of a clipping mask. And so you can see the advantage of, wow, I can take any photograph and I can put it within my text, and, and it's unlimited on, on how, what kind of things you can do with that. So that's pretty neat. And the nice thing is, is if you take all of your text layers, including the highlight and the drop shadows, and make sure to link those together, <clears throat> And then you can move them, and notice the the photograph stays where it is, but all of your styling and your text, you can move it right into the right position where you feel like, hey, this is a perfect spot, and it looks good to me, and so you can you can manipulate it in that way. All right, I'll put it kind of back to center here. And so that's uh, using a photograph uh, with a clipping mask, and I'll shut that off for now. I'll move this out of the way. Now here's another way you can use clipping mask to stylize text. Um, and it's with the Pattern Fill Quartz Filter. Now make sure you, um, if you're not familiar with it, um, go and uh, uh, watch my tutorial on that filter to get familiar with it and then come back here and be able to use it. So with that filter I've created a pattern. And um, in this case, make sure to create a gray to white or black and white pattern. And, and I'll show you why in just a second. So we've got our cool pattern. I sized it down to where I wanted it. And now we do the same thing. We simply put this pattern right above the text here. So we'll drop that down. And um, I actually it accidentally created a clipping mask automatically but just right click and then create as a clipping mask and look what it does it makes really cool um, a, a styling on your text and you know just like the pattern fill filter we used in the last tutorial as a background you know as whatever you can make um, it's not it's it's unlimited and so we got this cool uh, really cool effect here now the reason why we did it in a gray is because we want to stack um, uh, clipping masks. And what I mean by that is your, your filter is clipped to this text layer, which creates you know just the pattern on the text, which is nice. But now we want to add some really neat gradient color to it. And so I can put the uh, gradient on a clipping mask right above the pattern layer and watch what it does. Now it's styling the color. So you see you get the great pattern underneath and now you can get um, any custom gradient you can imagine and overlay on top of that. And I'll choose another one here. Um, that's beautiful. You see that, all that different color. It makes it so unique and different than anything out there. Um, you're not just another cookie cutter um, effect or style. You're really making things very unique. Now the beautiful thing is to get the um, gradient clipping mask to work, the only difference is you have to make sure that the blending mode on any gradient is on overlay. And, uh, and, and if it isn't, um, watch what happens, you'll lose the pattern. Which, if that's what, you're, you know, you can still use this as, as your style, but if you're using a pattern down here, um, you want to be sure you're on um, overlay so that that will show through. So you get both the color and the, uh, the pattern. Now, of course, if you feel like, oh, this is a little dull, I want, to, uh, I want it a little brighter, you can just duplicate um, the um, clipping mask layer 
and notice it can brighten it up. And you have control with uh, the opacity. How bright do you want it to go? Um, you just want to add a little brightness to it for color. And look at how that pops. And see how you, so, so all of these are overlay and I can stack and notice if I do a whole different gradient, I can affect the entire color of it. I'll take one of these off. Um, I'll add some green to it. I mean, you can mix and match a little bit. You know, you can't do too many because it'll darken it, but um, uh, you can really come up with some unique combinations um, with this here. So let's try, let me see, let me try two of these and the top layer, and we'll remove this and we'll get like a gold color. Look at that. So look at all those things that you can do with just using clipping masks, using some quartz filters, using some gradients, and even photographs if you like, on top of your text, and with a little bit of styling. Um, wow, you can just, you can go crazy with it and make really unique, powerful, and neat stuff with Pixelmator. So hopefully this is, uh, uh, this is uh, easy to follow. It's a little more advanced, but go back through again, watch it again, and start creating um, with all different kinds of fonts, um, pictures, and gradients, some really neat text. Thank you guys very much, and we look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thank you.